Good afternoon. Now it's afternoon. We're at <laughs> Warrenwood Island still. Still. Uh, and still joining me is the historian of Washington Lodge, number three, Worshipful Steve. Hi. Now, for those who do not know, mostly the general public, yes, George Washington himself was a Freemason. Uh, made a mason in Alexandria Lodge, number 22. I believe it was about 1752-ish yes. that he took his degrees. Um, he went on to also groom uh, another early Freemason, or one I believe he sort of semi-sponsored, and that is the Marquis de Lafayette. Yes. Uh, who, once he returned, I think, back to France, became a Mason. Yes. After knowing Washington was a Freemason. Right. Um, but Washington was highly prized as a Freemason here in this country, being who he was. Uh, in fact, our Grand Lodge of Masons of Massachusetts actually has a lock of his hair that is... Uh, encapsulated in a golden urn that is made by Paul Revere. And that's brought out every first of the Grand Master of Massachusetts three-year term installation. And it's paraded around the lodge room. There are other artifacts out there that have been presented to various lodges. Uh, there are two known Masonic aprons that he has worn. There are others out there that proclaim to be Washington aprons. Um, when Washington passed away in December 13th, 14th of 1799, I think. 14th. Uh, 14, thank you. Um, various Grand Lodges sent out circulars to all the Masonic Lodges. I happen to have uh, one in uh, Cambridge from Amicable Lodge that was sent to them in, um, uh, I, I think, a copy of it. Uh, that was sent to them for their archives. Uh, but various lodges uh, were sent um, correspondence from the Grand Lodge uh, that Washington had passed away and that the lodges would be in mourning for a certain period of time. But this lodge here, again, very unusual. And as I mentioned, don't bring your box in and don't bring your horse blinders in because this is a great story here that just came to fruition. So I'm going to let Steve talk about, unfortunately, the death of George Washington. Thank you. Um, it was 1799, uh, Christmas Eve actually, December 24th. Um, our lodge was having our annual communication which means our new master at the time was about to be installed along with all the other officers. So the room was filled with East Bay Freemasons from all over Rhode Island and nearby Massachusetts. Uh, during this meeting, it says in our lodge minutes that an alarm was heard at the door. And the master inquired as to who was making the alarm. And it was determined that it was a messenger sent personally from the Grand Master of Rhode Island to let us know that George Washington had died. And the exchange is actually noted within our minutes book uh, that the Grand Master then ordered, as you said, all Masons to be in mourning for a certain period of time and required us all to wear black armbands. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting that we still have the door that that messenger came through to announce that. And we walk through that door every day that we're here. And it's, you're walking almost through history. You're walking through probably one of the most pivotal points of really our young country because there were people who thought that the 
country itself, the federal government would founder if George Washington had died, that he was almost the glue holding everything together. Um, and fortunately, here we are. Uh, but it was, you know, a very important time. And we can say that we got to share in that here at this particular large building. Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of gets to you. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And he that so demean himself as not to be endeavoring to add to the common stock of knowledge or understanding be deemed a drone in the hive of nature, a useless member of society. Brethren, don't be a drone, don't be useless. What Wishful Steve has told us are things that need to be passed on. This is your job. You're the collectors. You're the lovers of Masonic history. You wouldn't be watching this channel if you didn't like the stuff. Since you are watch watching, I charge each and every one of you to get out there to your lodges. Find stuff. Look up its histories. Get some stories. Pass it around. This is how Freemasonry lives. Continue that. With that, I can't thank you enough for watching. Pleasure. I thank you guys very much for hosting us, and we'll see you again on Masonic Curators.